Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. On this year's Strategy Game, and we are returning to our Let's Play of Democracy 4, playing a futuristic Spain. Now, I think this is probably going to be our last episode of this playthrough and this campaign, so if you do have any other ideas for future campaigns, do let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to check these out, and maybe we're going to have a go at these. And for those of you who don't know yet, of course, there have been a couple of uh, things that I have been trying, and you'll find a link at the end of the uh, this episode or just generally on my channel. Now, speaking of the comments, I've been reading up the comments on, on the last episode and I think you guys were spot on in pointing out a couple of flaws in our society here. Now, if we do look at this, this is fantastic in a lot of ways. You know, this is very much a technologically advanced society here that, that we were looking for. We've got a moon program, we've got a Mars program, technology is at its height, um, it's driving industrial automation, uh, we, are, we actually got the environment somewhat under control. A lot of the issues that we had been facing have gone away from the health issues, the security issues, um, and our economy is actually doing relatively fine. Yes, we do have a small deficit, but the economy is doing, is doing fantastically well. So, in light of all of this, what are the faults then? Well, a couple of minor ones, uh, but I don't think they're actually the worst stuff. The big bad things in our society are around over here. If we do look at the disposable income of our citizens, this is the original distribution. You can see there's a large middle class, very few poor people, very few wealthy people. It's all of so, sort of all centered in, in the middle here. What's the effect of our policies? A lot of our policies do drive people to be very, very poor indeed. Few wealthy people, few people who do profit from our policies a lot, uh, but the large bulk of our society seems to be living in relative poverty here. Um, and I say relative poverty because actual poverty, actually having absolutely no money at all here, that's not actually that high. That's around the 20% mark here. That's, that's not quite as bad. But what is bad is just how many people do live in, in relative poverty. These people don't make much. And the reason for that, if we do look at all of these effects over here, one of the biggest ones, uh, if not the biggest one, is the wages over here. Wages do take up a lot, a lot of the disposable income um, of a lot of our citizens here. And that is a problem. That is a problem in, in a lot of ways. And I do concur that that is a problem. So you guys have been suggesting that we change that. Now, wages are down here. And you can see they are indeed at a very low level. They're driven by a couple of things. To some degree, illegal immigration and immigration. Um, I don't think I want to change too much about these things uh, after all. Because immigration, yes, it does cause a couple of issues uh, for us. But... I think it's also a reflection of our society being in great shape. GDP is great, stability is great, health, foreign relations, human development, all of these things do drive up immigration and I think we can be happy that it's that high. Of course we could try to pull it down, but yeah, it does have a negative effect on wages. The other negative effect on wages is the unemployment and the unemployment is kind of high and that's a lot of the reason why a lot of our people don't have that much. And that is more by design of what we set out to do. You can see a big driver here of the unemployment is industrial automation, technology, productivity, and so on. So yes, immigration is in there, but it's, it's really mostly the tech stuff. And that to me means we've built a society here where robots, where machines, where computers do most of the work. And we could now enact, as a couple of you have suggested, um, enact policies that drive up employment basically employ people in the rural societies and so on. And there are great policies for that. For example, in economy, I think rural development grants drives down unemployment. So that's that's a fantastic thing here uh, for us to do. We could also try to boost wages just outright by um, increasing the union support and so on. Uh, we should be a little bit mindful that you, trade unionists uh, pretty much actively hate us and they're aggressively opposed to us. Luckily, there's not that many of them, and any policy that would increase their number, I don't think would be that beneficial for us. But there is an issue here. There's an underlying issue that we do need to address. And that underlying issue, now again, we could try to fix the unemployment. But I think it's more in the spirit of this playthrough if we don't do that. 
And if instead we pick a different policy, one that harnesses all of these technological advances and basically says, well, if computers are doing all of the work, and if this is a utopian society where robots are around, where everything is sort of automated, we don't necessarily need to be classified in terms of traditional employment. And even though I personally dislike the policy in current terms, I think we do have something over here that does sound very interesting. And that is the universal basic income. So a universal welfare program given to everyone in society at a flat rate, regardless of their income and wealth. So that is a way how we can boost wages for everyone sort of directly. We are directly impacting the wage. We are directly um, getting people to get more money. So basically we are directly handing out money and because people have more choices in their jobs, wages will also increase. It will drive up socialism. It will drive up everyone's income. So that's very, very great. It will upset the uh, capitalists, but I think we're going to be all right with that. And it's going to massively, it's going to basically abolish poverty all along. The big downside, of course, that it's extremely expensive. Nine billion here per quarter. So that is super, super expensive. But I think it's worthwhile doing. So we'll do that. We'll uh, go to the next turn and then we'll see that we are going to have a massive deficit here, which um, I think is going to be an issue. This might also be an issue. No, it seems fine. We do need to talk about these status effects here in a moment. Uh, but that's OK. We don't need to be too concerned here. Ooh. Ooh, this is not this is not great. Oh well, we'll see. Um, so here's the next thing. There is an issue that I do need to talk about, and that is, um, in driving for the achievements, I think I basically discovered that one of the achievements was untenable, and that is the living in the future achievement. That can only be reached if internet speed here exceeds. 0.75 or 75 percent that's not currently where it is at um it's basically starting at 25 and if we do add up all of these things here from the game files it just doesn't seem viable at all also i thought now i was convinced that that was not uh, before, that that one could not reach that and i did look into the game files and i spent a long time in the game files and i actually discovered another positive influence actually um, that isn't being triggered even though I think it should be triggered. We'll see what that is in a moment. It's basically uh, going to revolve around automated cars and, and cars, self-driving cars. But that did mean I wanted to try to fix that and bring that in the game so that we could have at least that we could see what the effects would be of the driverless car uh, positive status effect here yeah, and what would that would do with our um, society. So I basically tim tim uh, <laughs> tinkered with the game files and made it possible for us to achieve that, uh, which currently it isn't. Currently it cannot come into play just by the way uh, that the game files are written. Every positive effect is in there. And so I played, I had a couple of turns just to see whether it would work, whether it could trigger that. And unfortunately that did one thing. It did actually trigger the living in the future achievement. So I cannot show that on screen to you because now it has been triggered and will not trigger again. I'm very upset by that. Um, I was I was sure it could not be triggered. I actually submitted a report to the developer um, and they said they would look at it. So I'm not sure why that is. I know there was a, an update in the meantime, but I don't think it fixed that. So I don't know why that triggered, but here we go. We have achieved the living in the future um, achievement basically here in I think two turns if, if we do head uh, another time here. So that's very unfortunate. I'm very sorry about that. I cannot change it. Um, but at least, you know what, let's at least read the text here. So living the future, high internet speed, high technology, a decent space program with Mars mission planned and driverless cars. Is this science fiction? No, it is your accomplishments. Amazing. Right. So let's suppose we have achieved that. Um, we have now the UBI that should drive up wages by a lot. And you can see it does. So that's lovely. And you should be able to see that society is in a much better position now. No, not quite. But I think you will be. We should see that UBI, universal basic income, is a positive influence somewhere over here. High productivity does give you some money. Unemployment benefit. 
Maybe it hasn't updated. No, no, no. There we are. UBI, 18,000. So that's quite a lot. And wages are a much, much smaller negative influence now. That being said, the deficit is now extremely high. And that would mean our debt here is ballooning out of control very, very quickly. So we do need to change a couple of things to address that. And I think at that point, uh, we'll have... Uh, will have some some influence so the other thing I would like to change is the real estate bubble here by simply providing more state housing that's gonna cost another billion here but it's gonna drive away the real estate bubble which does have a lot of negative effects um, and I do think again it just fits in with sort of the futuristic society where no one really has to work and at least as a state we are providing a lot of things uh, sort of for free here um, of course nothing is for free and we will need to raise that money in a moment uh, so bear with me here for a second. So we've got 18 political power. We do need to address a deficit of probably around 14 billion now that we have increased the housing there. Um, there are two principal ways I think we should do that. Um, and one of them is the corporate income tax and the other one is the normal income tax, so the personal income tax. I think increasing this here does have the biggest way forward because we can somewhat easily increase that to at least over here. Let's apply this change. Middle income is not going to be happy, but um, yeah, there we go. The other thing is that probably in terms of taxes, I think I would like to enact the public tax return soon because very high tax rates do have the effect of driving down uh, the issues. And there we go. This is the positive influence here. That is driverless cars. Um, and again, you can see sort of how I changed the game files here to lead to this increase because we've got driverless cars that's a hundred percent technology is a hundred percent industrial automation is at a hundred percent and that does have an influence of 25 so that's any positive effect you can get um, and it does have a couple of interesting effects here uh, most importantly i think the car usage will go up well that's to be expected commuters do like it everyone sort of did, likes it a little bit but interestingly the motorist membership goes down a little bit and interestingly the gig economy is going to go away. So that is quite interesting. I thought, what's this? Internet crime. That's not really going to happen. Mm, da -dum -dum -dum. Human rights. No, we're going to turn down. We do like human rights. Ethnic minorities do like that, in fact. So that's nice. Good. I think we're going to play to the end of the term here. And then we're going to, sort of going to abdicate. Right. So how are people doing? Disposable income? Yeah, look at that. That's much, much better. That's a much better society. I think I think I'll be happy to leave that society um, and uh, and have it around. Okay, and the real estate bubble here might go away soon. That would be much appreciated. So that's that's fantastic actually. And the gig economy, yeah, it's dropping down here. And I think the reason for that is because basically you don't need an Uber, you don't need an Uber Eat. Um, if you've got driverless cars, there will be no people employed in the gig economy at least. Um, of course, these services will still be around, but it's just not part of, an e of the economy and employment anymore. So I think that's going to be interesting. It's also going to drive up trade unionist membership, uh, which is interesting, and it will make them hate us a little bit less, uh, which is also kind of interesting. So yeah, their membership should increase. Their happiness should increase. Yeah, it's currently still low, but I think they'll be much, much happier soon. Um, and I think that's fine. I think it's fine if we do let the cars do that automatically. Uh, the downside is, of course, the car usage, uh, which, which will spike up and cause a lot of negative effects. Not not much that we can do about that, I'm afraid. So that's going to be all right, though. Right. Um, What else do you want to do? Public tax returns. There we go. Let's implement them. I think we're going to implement them somewhat at a higher level. The wealthy dislike that, liberals dislike that, but other than that, I think we'll be fine. We still have a deficit of around 8 billion, and I think we want the corporates to pay for that. Um, and the reason basically here is it's not quite enough, I think, to cover our, our shortfall here. Yeah, but gig economy, no longer thing. A hunger strike. Yeah, let's do the humane thing. Everyone likes that. That's nice. Election is coming up. And we have a small deficit here of 2.6 billion. It's not a big one. By the way, are you going to go away? Yes. Lovely. I like it. Nice. That's good. So how's the disposable income looking? 
fantastic. I like it, guys. I very, very much like it. Um, anything else? We could address illegal immigration. I think illegal immigration has more or less strictly negative effects. But I think all in all we are alright on that front. We don't need to go too overboard on that one. State Energy Company. If we increase that, some people would be happy, but capitalists not really. And I think we are straining our relationship here with the capitalists. You're mildly unhappy, but you're not actively trying to murder us. So that's going to be alright. Okay, 2.6 billion. How do we get that? Sales tax, maybe increase that a little bit. Yeah, that would actually be more than enough. So we are currently 2.6, so that should be 12. Something like this. Let's apply that. And that should basically make everyone a little bit happier. Or at least that should uh, balance the budget here. Not much else that we do need to do here. Let's briefly think about this. No, I think this is all alright. Don't need any of that. Public services. I think we are fine here. Indeed, I don't want to do... Oh, we can do the stamp out racism. That is typically very good because racial tensions I dislike. It's going to increase the number of liberals, which I do like to see as well. So that's all A-OK. -okay. We could do enterprise investment scheme, but honestly, I think we are fine. We don't need to... Uh, we don't need people to be self-employed. I think we're going to be all right as is. Rural development grants. None of this is, is really critical for now. So I think we are basically fine. We could do the border navy. Let's do it, but let's not fully fund it. I just want to drive down illegal immigration a little bit. Ethnic minorities really actively hate this. Interestingly, this doesn't really have, or this immediately has a large effect. Then sort of it doesn't increase for a long time and then it increases very quickly. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Let's keep it at a very low funding level, but maybe we're going to get rid of the negative effect there. Oh, our team exits the World Cup. That's uh, that's bad for Spain, at least. Uh, but we are closing in on the election, so that's nice to see. Okay, yeah, unemployment is kind of high, but I don't see that as a problem if we are alright on other things. We do have a minuscule surplus here, basically zero, just uh, less than that's a two per mil. Uh, surplus, so that's okay-ish, I guess. Uh, let's do satellite road pricing. I would like to drive down car usage a little bit. And it does feel right to do that on a sort of a tech level here. Could do school buses, but parents actively love us. Pa parents are actually our biggest supporter group uh, in terms of just how much they love us, which is a far cry from where we started out, so that's nice to see. Um, I think legal aid is just something that is usually extremely useful, so um, let's just try to tweak a couple of policies here as we are leaving out of office. Drones do seem thematically appropriate, but I don't think we need them. So that's okay. Yeah, basically everything else here seems to be okay too. Yeah, so let's go and see what we have got. Ben, face recognition? No, no, we're going to allow that we attack people, so I think that's a... I think I actually banned, <laughs> banned it. That's, that's unfortunate. Okay, nevertheless, it doesn't matter too much. Internet crime, not really a thing. Uh, it's going to be all right, I think. Good. So, that just does leave us with, I think, two turns? Two turns till the next election. Okay. Anything else, then, that we want to address? We've got basically no one left here. We've got the phase school subsidies. We basically already reduced them by a lot. And that's okay, but they're still building up racial tensions. Religious people do like it, but there's so few people who identify as that that I think we can completely get rid of it uh, Because I've been wanting to do that for a long time, honestly, so that's nice to see Right anything else then I don't think so. I Don't think there's that much else that I would like to address over here No, I think pretty much we're in a very good equilibrium here we want to help out the environment a little bit more? Just sort of leave, leave a good legacy there at the last couple of moments? I don't think so. I think we are more or less fine. Any of these subsidies here? 
don't really do it for me. We are fully 100% electric cars. So I don't think we need to be too concerned about car usage, actually. And a lot of these things here have been maxed out. The only thing is air travel. We do have the high speed rail subsidies, and that does take away a little bit from that. But unfortunately, GDP just increases that by a lot. Could try to increase the airline tax here. It would have some effect, and I think that's going to be alright. Let's do it. Let's do a small, small tax on, on air travel. Hopefully bringing people to travel a little bit more locally or use just the internet. Uh, we've got great internet to travel. And you know what? I think 2020 has shown uh, that even though it would be nice to go places again, um, it's certainly completely viable to not do that for a moment, for some time at least. Right, where's illegal immigration? There. I would have expected you to go down a little bit faster here. Well, let's see what's going to happen. Speed limits. Um, yeah, we are not going to change those. Manifesto promises? No, no, no. I think we are not actually going to go. We're just going to have the next uh, the next election happen to us, I think. Right, why is this not plummeting? It should be, isn't it? shouldn't it? For the Navy. Yeah, it's taking too long. We're not going to see that go away. But look at that. We still have a lot of positive influences here. So I think we're going to comfortably win this third election, actually, uh, that we're going to face over here. And you can see just how lovingly smashing that goes. 53 million votes for us. Next, next dose spot is 1.6 million. So I think that's perfectly fine. You know, you guys are, are perfectly cool. Dubious role model? Well, that's okay. So, yeah, I think we're going to leave it at that. Before we do, though, um, I do want to check out just how much our society has changed. Uh, where was that? I think over here. Right. Um, let's look take a look at a couple of things here. So, disposable income, much better. Not as good as original, but I think still fairly fantastic. And it doesn't count everything. Um, in terms of focus groups, only very few things here who actually dislike us. Trade unionists, at this point they're a large percentage of the population, but still, um, uh, at this point only moderately opposed. And I think if we could go for an increase in the labor laws, I think we might be all right uh, in the long term and no one would murder us there. Wealthy people dislike us due to a lot of reasons. Uh, I, can, I can understand that. That's all right. We actually are earning a surplus here. And I think over time, even, even in the downturn of the economy here, of the global economy, we should be repaying a lot of our debt, and that should be fine. Debt interest still the third largest item here on our expense list. That's interesting. Almost as high as universal basic income. Interesting. I had not expected that. Corporation tax. That's quite high. Payroll tax. Actually relatively high as well. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and then let's look at the changes that we have. So where's that? I think it's over here. Right, we can look at the compass first, maybe. I dislike to see the voters. But yeah, you did. You can see that basically Spain did start out as somewhat liberal socialist, uh, even though a large number of people were conservative. And that has taken a turn towards much more capitalist measures for a while here as we are fixing the economy. And once that has been fixed, we did sort of gradually increase our state services. Well, firstly, we did run a lot more liberal uh, over time in our social policies. Um, and once we had attained a very, very high level of the economy, we did use a lot of these things to increase our stealth, uh, our state services. So we are very socialist liberal. That's that's surprising. I didn't expect to end up that socialist. But okay, I, I suppose. Let's look at the biggest changes to our economy. We are much, much more productive than we were. We basically did start at, at, out at a third. We have much better foreign relations. Crime is basically non-existent. Our rail industry has grown to pretty much its maximum. Um, that was previously a state rail industry, so that's not a fair comparison. This is just the private industry here. But still, okay, interesting to see. Industrial automation, gigantic. Telecoms industry, oh yeah, we did have to enact the state telecom industry, which still is a little bit weird uh, to increase the internet speed, because I know state, state services do not necessarily increase uh, internet speed 
they they just don't. I, I don't know where that is coming from. Uh, GDP increasing by a lot. Private pensions, yeah, we did abolish the public pensions, otherwise we would be in a big hole. Currency strength, lifespan, and look at that. Private housing, okay. Foreign investment, air travel, congestion has been completely reduced. On the other hand, oh, racial tensions actually came down even though immigrations have gone up by a lot, so that's good to see. Oil price and poverty reduced, health increased, internet speed increased. People are working longer. I think this is the one thing that I would say is probably a negative change here by, by a bit. Um, energy efficiency though, gender equality and stability. That's nice to see. Legal drug, con drug consumption, never really a focus, but okay. Electric car transition, of course, that's nice to see. And tech and population. Alcohol consumption down, poor earnings up. More vegetarians, more equal society, less corruption. Cryptocurrencies, okay, I guess. Human development, immigration, less money given to charity, more education, more rails being used, less cars being used, less crime, less violent crime, I should say, more high earnings, more private schools, immigration has gone down, healthcare demand has actually, so we are, we are providing more healthcare services and they are more, uh, they are less asked because people are more healthy. Democracy up, unemployment up, but just a scooch, and I think it's cautioned off pretty well with the UBI, so I, I think I'm happy about that. Environment slightly down, that's that's somewhat uh, disappointing, but okay. And everything else is sort of where it was. So, that being said, I had a blast with you guys. This, this was probably, for me, the most uh, fun playthrough so far, because it did align to a lot of the things that I would have naturally done. Maybe not towards the end, because I don't think in, in reality you can ever max out GDP in that way. So um, at that point, you know, it just does make sense to, to start providing a lot of state services, even if they do reduce uh, the overall GDP, because it doesn't. If it's maxed out, uh, there will be no changes there. So that being said, hope you enjoyed. Do let me know your thoughts on the next campaign uh, and on this one, of course. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you around. Bye-bye, guys.